The Bee Who Spoke by Al McEwish. Illustrations by Rebecca Gibbon. Once upon a time in the great city of Paris near the Rue Saint Rustique in the 18th arrondissement, there lived a girl named Belle. Belle loved the city and the city loved her. She knew its alleys and avenues, its rhythms, noises, colours and people by heart. She knew that Monsieur Talgard opened his bakery every morning at seven. Madame Babineau watered her sunflowers at eight, and the bells of the Sacre Coeur marked nine o'clock, a full minute after all the other city bells. But much as Belle loved the city, and the city loved Belle, there was a small piece of her heart in another place altogether. Every year around this time, as the days grew longer, the weather warmer, and ice-cold lemonade became a priority, Belle and her parents would make a very special journey. Belle's trip required careful preparation. For days beforehand, she packed and repacked her bag with her most treasured possessions. One penknife, a gift from her father. Five pencils sharpened to a point, And one magnifying glass polished to a shine. One new camera, saved up for and bought. A croissant for emergencies. And last but not least, a brand new journal. If you were to ask anyone in Montmartre about Belle, they would say, Ah, Belle sees it all. So she did, and it was all recorded in her journals. After a long journey spent singing songs and playing memory games, they finally arrived at her grandparents' house. Belle was bursting with impatience. Every year, Belle's grandfather would work all winter on a gift for her. When she was very small, he gave her a hobby horse. When a little older, a tree house. Then last year, a beautiful easel. This year, her present was something very special indeed. It was Belle's mother's bicycle from when she was a little girl. Belle had gazed longingly at it a million times in the picture on her mother's dressing table. And now here it was right before her, freshly painted and gleaming in the sun. She could hardly breathe for excitement. Belle threw her bag in the basket, rang the bell twice and headed off down the lane as fast as her feet would pedal. Don't get lost, shouted her father after her. Don't be late for tea, added her grandmother. Ride like the wind, cried her grandpa laughing. But Belle was already gone. The first thing people from the city always notice when they get into the countryside is the sky. It seems bigger, bluer, more sky-like, stretching as far as the eye can see. Belle saw the clouds tumbling into one another, a bird hovering above a patchwork of fields, the tops of the trees swaying in the wind. What she didn't see was the root of a great oak tree in her path. There was a bump, followed by a whoa, followed by a clatter, then an owl. All the animals and insects fell silent. Even the breeze seemed to stop for a moment. Belle looked down. Her skirt was covered in dust. She had a bruised knee, but worst of all, she had an uneasy feeling in her stomach. She was lost. Belle didn't know the country, and the country didn't know her. Hello, she called out in her smallest voice. Hello, came a friendly voice in reply. But there was no one to be seen. Confused, Belle grabbed her scattered belongings then she noticed a little bee 
gently buzzing towards her. It inspected her croissant curiously. Then it spotted Belle's journal on the ground. Belle, it remarked. What a beautiful name. Belle tried to speak, but the words refused to come out. Finally, three did. Bees can't talk, exclaimed Belle. Of course we can, said the bee. You just have to know how to listen. Belle has come top of her class in biology, but at no time has anyone ever mentioned that bees can talk. The bee's voice was wise, thoughtful and kind. It made the bee seem much bigger than it was. I think I'm lost, cried Belle. She was determined not to cry. Why, there's a map all around you, said the bee reassuringly. But Belle could only see trees. The bee buzzed a little closer and folded its arms. A bit like her biology teacher when she was about to explain something new. Do you like adventures? it asked. I live for them, replied Belle, brightening. Then I'd like to take you on a little journey, said the bee. The bee led Belle to a clearing full of flowers. Belle met Arnica. Arnica met Belle, said the bee. She peered closer. The flower looked familiar. Suddenly, she remembered Madame Babineau's window box. It looks like a tiny sunflower, said Belle. They're cousins, said the bee, smiling. The bee showed Belle how to take the petals, press them between her hands, then rub the oil on her knee. And at once the ache began to fade. Belle's eyes widened in astonishment. That's nature, finished the bee. Come, I have some more friends I'd like you to meet. The bee knew everyone, and everyone knew the bee. What a busy place, said Belle, as they stopped to let an army of ants pass on the forest floor. In nature, we all have jobs to do, said the bee. What's yours? asked Belle, as they arrived at a particularly tall tree. Ah, said the bee, puffing with pride. Nature gave us the most important job of all. help everything to grow said the bee if there were no buzz there would be no oranges for your orange juice no strawberries for your jam none of those delicious things Belle agreed that this would make for a very dull breakfast we visit the plants and the bushes and the trees and carry their precious pollen from one flower to another said the bee that's how nature makes new plants and flowers Do you get any treats? asked Belle, taking out her camera. Oh yes, declared the bee, we get nectar. To make honey, cried Belle. Her biology teacher would have been proud. They climbed high into the tree and Belle saw for the very first time a beehive abuzz with busy activity. Everything seems just so, said Belle, marvelling. Ah, said the bee. We have a saying for that. <laughs>